Hey, I'm Cody and welcome back to another Crafts Right video. This is part three of a four-part series showing how I took a simple project like this hexagon pencil holder and elevated it using different techniques and designs. In this video, I'll show you I made this gradient, or in the popular hair term, ombre. Ombre is French for gradient. Pencil holder using four different types of woods and miter splines. Let's get to it. For this project, I used leftovers from the spiral pattern pencil holder I built last week. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description below for you to check it out. And while we're talking about episodes, if you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Next week, I'll be posting part four of this series, the mystery pencil holder. Since I already had the majority of the wood in the correct thickness from my last project, all I had to dimension was a piece of oak. This way I had four colors of wood to make the gradient transition. From dark walnut to light maple. Using the joiner and planer, I brought it down to a little proud of a quarter of an inch. If you don't have any of the bigger dimensioning equipment, you can always buy your materials and most hardwood dealers will dimension them for you for a small fee. I ripped everything down to 9 16 of the table saw. Ripping the strips to this dimension made it so that when all eight pieces were in place, it gave me pretty close to the correct height. Then I cut the strips to roughly one foot lengths of the miter saw. Gluing the panel together was very easy using the same jig I used in my last video. I just added a few pieces of scrap to shorten the clamping distance. I could have repositioned the wedge part of the jig, but this worked just fine. After the glue dried, I used a paint scraper to clean up the squeeze out, then ran the piece through the planer to bring everything to an even quarter inch thickness. Using my miter gauge on the table saw, I really need to build a crosscut sled. I squared off one end of the panel and then started slicing off the sides of the hexagon at one and seven eighths inches wide. Tip. By adding a spacer block to your fence, you can repeat your cuts accurately with the miter gauge without the stock touching the fence. This is very important to have a gap between the piece you're cutting and the fence Otherwise, the risk of binding and kickback is extremely high and extremely dangerous. Setting the blade in my table saw to 30 degrees, I snuck up on my bevel cut until the blade just kissed the top corner of the side panels, then ran the sides through to cut the bevels. I double checked the bevels all fit well by holding the sides together with painter's tape and doing a dry fit. Next I cut the dado for the base plate at the table saw, a quarter inch up from the bottom, a quarter inch wide, and an eighth of an inch deep. So I promised in my last video I'd give an in-depth guide to cutting the base plate, so here goes. First, get a blank square, roughly one and a quarter times bigger than the final plate. With your miter gauge set to 30 degrees and a scrap fence in place, run the fence through the table saw to establish a kerf. Take your digital calipers and measure the inside distance of the base plate dado on one side. Mark that distance on your scrap miter fence from the edge of the kerf. Place the corner of your square on the mark, cut, then rotate the piece and place the new corner on the mark you made, cut, rinse and repeat. Before the final glue up, I finished the inside of the pencil holder with 220 grit sandpaper, shellac, and paste wax. This saves trying to finish the pencil holder when it's all put together, and the, the finish helps clean up any squeeze glue out. Putting glue in the appropriate places, I wrapped her up and made sure it holds things, like pencils or exacto knives, and it did. I have honored my ancestors. So some of you might have caught on by now and are saying to yourselves, hey, those are end grain to end grain joints. Those aren't gonna hold up, Cody. And you're right. They're not the strongest joint out there. And even though the pencil holder is more decorative than structural, I didn't want the whole thing to explode should it be dropped. So I decided to add some miter splines for both strength and decoration. 
I took the holder over to the bandsaw and just eyeballed the first cut to be central to the top segment, the very first segment at the top of the pencil holder. I made the first cut about 90% of the way through, then stopped, and added a stop block to make repeating this step super easy. Then I cut the rest of the curves. This could be done with a handsaw and a lot of patience if you don't have a bandsaw, or maybe a jigsaw. No, not a jigsaw. Don't use a jigsaw for this. The splines I made from scrap maple and walnut I had lying around that were off cuts from dimensioning all of the lumber for these projects. And they were just about the right thickness to fit snugly in the curves. You could make these yourself using a thin rip jig at the table saw and a hand plane. I cut them to rough lengths using my shooting board miter box combo and then chop them up with a hand chisel. Gluing the splines into the tiny curves was messy and time consuming, but using a small leather awl helped. The splines were held in with just friction. After the splines had dried, I took the pencil holder back over to the bandsaw to whack off the waste. Hack off the waste. Hack. Hack off the waste. Then sanded them flush with the belt sander. After sanding up to 220 grit, I applied three coats of shellac and a coat of paste wax. Never has holding your pencils, pens, office supplies, whatever looks so sleek and fresh. Currently have an ombre hairstyle? Why not match your stationery? <laughs> However you look at it, this is a fun little project, and the same design idea could be applied to a host of other things. And if you didn't see it, I dropped a little Easter egg back in the section covering how to cut the base plate, so you might want to go back and check that out. Stay tuned for the mystery pencil holder. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.